Good day everyone. Today we are going to be discussing about the soil compaction. Okay. So now let us talk about the factors affecting the compaction. A while ago, we have talked about how the moisture content had a great influence on the degree of compaction achieved by a given soil. Besides moisture content, other important factors that affect compaction are soil type and compaction effort. The importance of each two factors will be described. First, let us talk about the effect of soil type. Soil type, that is the grain size distribution, shape of the soil grains, specific gravity of soil solids, and amount and type of clay minerals present, has a great influence on the maximum dry unit weight and optimum moisture content. Lee and Swed Comp in 1972 studied compaction curves for 35 different soil samples. They observed four different types of compaction curves, which are shown on the screen. Type A compaction curve are the ones that have a single peak. This type of curve is generally found in soils that have a liquid limit between 30 to 70. Curve type B is a one and one half peak curve. And curve type C is a double peak curve. Compaction curves of types B and C can be found in soils that have a liquid limit less than about 30. Compaction curve of type D are the ones that do not have a definite peak. They are termed odd shape Soils with liquid limit greater than about 70 may exhibit compaction curves of type C or D. Soils that produce C and D type curves are not very common. Here are the typical compaction curves for the four soils. According to ASTM D698, we have the poorly graded sand, Highly plastic clay, silty clay, and sandy silt. From the figure, we can see that the sandy silt have a greater amount of dry unit weight at a lesser amount of the moisture content, thus making it a very good subgrade material. Next factor affecting compaction is the compaction effort. The compaction energy per unit volume E is used for standard proctor test described in the previous topic which is equal to compaction energy per unit volume equal to E equal to the number of blows per layer which is 25 blows per layer and the number of layers equal to 3. The weight of the hammer is equal to 2.5 kilogram. Convert it into kilonewton. And the height of drop of a hammer is 0 0.305 meter. And the volume of the mold is equal to 944 times 9 times 10 raised to negative 6 cubic meter, which is equal to approximately equal to 600 kilonewton meter per cubic meter, or in English units, equal to approximately equal to 12,400 foot pound per cubic foot. So this is the compaction energy for a standard proctor test. If the compaction effort per unit volume is changed, 
the graph for the moisture and unit weight curve will also change, which can be demonstrated with the figure on the screen, which shows four compaction curves for a sandy clay. The standard proctor mold and hammer were used to obtain the compaction curve. The number of layers of soil used for compaction was kept at 3 for all cases. However, the number of blows per each layer varied from 20 to 50. So, changing the amount of blows per layer at four different compaction curve, we can compute the amount of compaction energy exerted at each soil. So, here in our table, table is the compaction energy for each different type of curve. Wa curve 1, 2, 3, and 4 corresponding to the number of layer, corresponding to the number of blows per layer, and the equivalent compaction energy. If we observe the figure on the screen, we can see that, number 1, as the compaction effort is increased, the maximum dry unit weight of compaction is also increased. And number 2, as the compaction effort is increased, the optimum moisture content is decreased to some extent. The preceding statements are true for all soils. However, the, the degree of compaction is not directly proportional to the compaction effort. So, we have what we call a modified Proctor test. A while ago, we have discussed about the standard Proctor test. Now, we will discuss about the modified Proctor test. So, what is the difference? With the development of heavy rollers and their use in the field compaction, standard Proctor test was modified to better represent field conditions, which is referred to as the modified Proctor test or ASTM test designation D. 1557 and ASTO test designation T180. For conducting the modified Proctor test, the same mold is used with a volume of 943.3 cubic centimeter, as in the case in the standard Proctor test. However, the soil is compacted in 5 layers. So, if we use the formula for the compaction energy that was discussed a while ago, which is equal to number of blows per layer, number of layers, weight of hammer, and height of drop, all over volume of fold. Using the formula to get the compaction energy for the modified Proctor test, so the number of blows per layer is changed. It's not changed. But the number of layers was increased to 5. And the weight of hammer will be much heavier which is 44.5 newtons and the height of drop of the hammer will be 0 0.4527 meter but the volume of the mold remains unchanged which is equal to the compaction energy equal to 2696 kilonewton meter per cubic cent cubic meter so, here is the comparison of the hammer used in the standard and modified Proctor test in the figure. So, on the left is the hammer used for the standard Proctor test and on the right is the hammer used for the modified Proctor test. So, in this table, we can see the specifications for standard Proctor test with different methods. With the diameter of mold, volume of mold required, weight of hammer, height of hammer drop, number of hammer blows per layer, number of layers, and energy of compaction of the soil to be used.
On the next table is the specification for modified Proctor test. You can see that the diameter of mold, volume of mold, and remains unchanged. But the weight of hammer increases and also the number of layers of compaction. And also, correspondingly, the energy of compaction also increases. And the required soil to be used is also stated in the table.